the highest priority in a remediation is to protect the health and safety of the building occupants and the remediation workers. Remediation plans vary according to the size and complexity of the job. They may require updating if circumstances change or more extensive contamination is discovered. The remediation plan should include whether containment will be required, what level of PPE will be used, how the water or moisture problem will be fixed so the mold problem does not reoccur, how the moldy building materials will be removed to avoid spreading mold. A variety of methods are available to remediate damage to buildings and furnishings caused by moisture control problems and mold. The procedures selected depend on the size of the moldy area and the type of contaminated materials. Budget may also be a concern. The methods presented in this section outline one approach. Some professionals may prefer to use other methods. If possible, remediation activities should be scheduled during off hours when building occupants are less likely to be affected. Suggested cleanup methods are listed in Table 2 in the Resources section for various materials and furnishings that are affected. Method 1. Wet Vacuum Wet or wet extraction vacuums are designed to collect water. They can be used to remove water that has accumulated on floors, carpets, and hard surfaces. Wet vacuums should be used only when materials are still wet, otherwise they may spread mold spores. Wet vacuums alone will not dry carpets. Wet carpets must be pulled up and dried, then reinstalled. The carpet padding also must be dried. The tanks, hoses, and attachments of wet vacuums should be thoroughly cleaned and dried after use because mold and mold spores may stick to their surfaces. Method 2. Damp Wipe Mold can generally be removed from hard surfaces by wiping or scrubbing with water and detergent. Always follow the cleaning instructions on product labels. Surfaces cleaned by damp wiping should be dried quickly and thoroughly to discourage further mold growth. Porous materials that are wet and have mold growing on them may have to be discarded. Because mold will infiltrate porous substances and grow on or fill in empty spaces or crevices, completely removing mold can be difficult if not impossible. Mold can also cause staining and other cosmetic damage. Method 3. HEPA Vacuum High efficiency particulate air, or HEPA, vacuums are recommended for the final cleanup of remediation areas after materials have been thoroughly dried and contaminated materials have been removed. HEPA vacuums are also recommended for cleaning up dust that has settled outside the remediation area. When changing the vacuum filter, workers should wear PPE to prevent exposure to mold that has been captured in the vacuum. The filter and contents of the HEPA vacuum must be disposed of in well-sealed plastic bags. Care must be taken to ensure that the new filter is properly seated on the vacuum so there are no leaks. Method 4. Throw away damaged materials. Mold contaminated building materials that cannot be salvaged should be double bagged in 6 mil or thicker polyethylene bags. The bagged materials usually can be discarded as ordinary construction waste. Packaging mold contaminated materials in sealed bags before removing them from the containment area is important to minimize the spread of mold spores throughout the building. Large items that have heavy mold growth should be covered with polyethylene sheeting and sealed with duct tape before being removed from the containment area.